You're not going to believe the size of this one. G'day, Stu from UAV Futures here, and today we really are looking at this monster. I mean, look at the size of this thing for an FPV racing drone. It is absolutely dwarfing some of the things we've got on the wall. So essentially what this is, it's from the Fly No Shop. It's the Skull V2, and if you're wondering, that's correct. We are rocking some eight inch tri-props on here. So I am super pumped because what I think this is gonna be, this is gonna be a fantastic craft for those long range missions. Don't look at these big propellers and think, gee, that must go super quick. No, what this is all about, this is about getting some crazy flight times and doing some really, really cool stuff long range. I know a lot of people are into a long range and that's why I'm excited for this video because honestly, up until now, I have never seen a craft rocking props this big. So what this is, this is the part one review the bench breakdown we're going to put on the bench look at the text and the specs and find out what makes this frame special and then in the part two video a little card should pop up there that's where we're going to take it out fly it around and sort of find out what crazy flight times we can get with this thing show you guys some HD footage all that sort of jazz now a massive shout out to my patreon supporters in the fly no shop guys so go check those links out down below but essentially they've given me another one to give out to my patreon supporters so thank you so much to the fly no shop and thank you so much to my patreon supporters because look i couldn't do this without your support we're we're making some great stuff here and it feels great to be sharing this message with so many people. I'm getting so many emails about how this channel is helping get people into the hobby. So thank you so much. This is just a little thank you to give back to one of you guys. So that's going to go in the prize pool for this month for Patreon. But enough rambling. Let's stick this monster. I mean, look at the size of it. It's huge on the bench and uh, check it out. All right, let's do it. Alrighty, here it is on the bench. So much so that, look, it doesn't even really fit. I've got the camera completely zoomed out, but essentially, let's give it a bit of an overview. Then we're gonna jump in, look at the components, all that sort of jazz. So what this is, this is the Skull V2, the eight inch arm version. And don't be mistaken, this is definitely a long range rig. This is not gonna be a super durable, you know, super fast FPV racer. What this is about, this is about efficiency, smooth flights and long flight times. Now, what I want to do straight off the bat, you know, it's important when you need to think about your weight. So we're going to stick this on the scales, find out how much the complete rig weighs. So bear with me. I don't have an antenna on here, but it's coming in. Move that. About 476 grams. And uh, to be honest, that's not too bad when you consider the size of this thing. And it's got its GoPro mount on there. Everything like that. Some pretty big motors as well. Now, the people who are after this, they're after those people who are doing some long range stuff. So you want to do some really long flights, maybe up some mountains, down some rivers, across beaches, anywhere where you want to be able to have a reliable, smooth flight experience that also gets some great flight time. So you should be able to fly for days on this thing. Now it does some really clever stuff between, I guess, the carbon and also, I guess, the TPU because they work together to sort of make this. And I should mention that it does come in a couple of different versions. I'll link them down below, but there's like different arm versions, all that sort of jazz. So you can have like a five inch, six inch, seven inch, or even up to these crazy bad boys right here, the eight inch arms. Now what I want to do, let's quickly go through some of the components because I don't know if they're going to offer a bind and fly like this. You might be able to hassle them and ask them if you're after this sort of exact rig. So we're going to go through what I've got and then what I really want to talk about. I've got the frame here. I want to talk about this a little bit more in detail when we get to the design side of things. So essentially on my rig, what I've got, let's start at the outside end. Of course, I've got the 8 inch arm version. You can see I also got a sticker pack with mine. So look, it is carbon arms, but you do get like some vinyls or something. There's the option to order some of those to put on there. And it does look pretty sweet if you ask me. But starting at the outside end, you can see we've got some massive 8 inch props, tri blade on the outside and I think that's going to be a big issue for a lot of people trying to get some good props like this size. I have no idea how these ones are going to go but I'm hoping for some good flight times. They might need a little bit of balancing and that sort of stuff. And then underneath that, speaking of the motors, what we've got, we've actually got some pretty cool little Rebel motors on here and they're soft mounted. They're 2306 I think and 6. It's hard to fly. I'll flash a picture on the screen anyway and 1600 kV. So a very, very low setup. Very, very low kV I should say but that should result in some really really, really good efficiency. And again, the whole idea about this is increasing our flight times. Now they're soft mounted because there's actually a little solder pad underneath and that's where that goes to. So uh, it's cool with these little bumpers on the arms, the TPU parts, that is all soft mounted. Running towards the middle, of course, no ESCs on the arm. You could if you wanted to though, because you've got pr plenty of real estate. And in the middle, this is where I'll flash some more pictures on the screen. We've got just one of our little HGLRC. It's crazy in such a big frame. We've actually got such a little flight controller, you know, a beta flight OSD, all that sort of 
Jazz in the middle. So pretty standard stuff right there. Moving towards the front, of course, we've got our run cam on the front with an XSR for my receiver. And then on the back, we've got a TBS that we're gonna use for our video transmission. Now, if there was some things I would like to change, look, as a long range rig, you know, this thing, it's built super light, but I would probably be swapping out this XSR for something maybe like uh, one of the Crossfire units or something like that. That's what you, most people tend to do if they're going for so some extreme long ranges. But look, I'm gonna be happy. I'm gonna, still gonna be testing it with the XSR, checking the telemetry, all that sort of jazz. Now, what I wanna do, let's move in a little bit more and talk about the frame because look, that's the components out of the way and I'm not sure if they offer it, you know, as a bind and fly or not, but the frame, it's doing some pretty cool things. So the first thing first, I've got a bit of a six inch version over here. Let's put this to the side and and have a look at some of these actual plates. And it's pretty ingenious the way it all goes together because look, it's not really bolted with two sandwich stacks like this you really sort of used to. The way it works on the whole top canopy is sort of mounted. There's a whole bunch of sort of soft mounting in here so you should get some very, very smooth flight experiences. So you can sort of see a flash a picture on the screen as well. There's sort of these two little parts on the bottom. They're the sort of braces that hold the top part together. So it is almost like it's floating. The entire bottom section is floating on top of this part. So that's a totally different way of sort of joining our frames together. And then we've got this GoPro mount on the top, which I think is really, really clever as well. When you want to put your GoPro in, it's as simple as slide it in there. You can take it off easily, put it back on. It's all with this nice TPU mount, and you can also adjust the angles that it got on. Now I'm going to put it on the pretty shallow one because I'm not going to be going after speed. Let's see how easy I can get this back in. I'm not going to be going after speed. I'm going to be going after some long flights. And then it clicks over the back of this little standoff here, if I can get it in like so, and then your GoPro's locked, ready to rock and roll. So I really like where the GoPro is. It's gonna offer a great center of gravity as well because it's right smack bang in this sort of low profile little stack. Everything in here, I think you're gonna be getting some really good footage. Now flipping it over, there's another important part too. What we've got with the arms, it's very, very clever the way it goes together. So these are the only two bolts you really need to do. You can undo those, swap your arms out, and this one right here, that's actually not screwed in directly to the arm. That's more for the little stack in the middle and all that sort of stuff. So it's nice that you can replace your arms very easy and quickly if you need to. And look, I'm gonna say that is one of the limitations of these larger span arms. I don't think they're gonna be as durable as some of the others. I think it's gonna hold up okay, but don't expect to be smashing this thing into a tree at full speed or anything like that, because I do think you might be breaking one of the arms. In saying that, however, though, you do get a pretty good warranty. So I'll link some details about the warranty down below as well, because look, the Flyno Shop does some have some sort of replacement plan. I'm not too sure on the exact details, but I know that at least there is something there. If you happen to break your aircraft, break your frame there is some sort of system in place for sort of getting you some replacements or getting you cheaper parts or something like that. Now another little design right here you can see we're using more TPU and that's for the camera mount and these these two little parts right here everything in here is sort of soft mounted or everything to the extra degree soft mounted sort of top plate soft mounted flight controller soft mounted motors and now we've even got a soft mounted I guess little TPU mount holding in our camera so the hard vibrations that are going to come through this thing is going to be very very minimal and you're going to get some silky I mean silky glass still super smooth flight footage as you're flying around now one part I do like you've got these two little three millimeter plates that are either side so you can see that makes up the bulk of sort of everything that's in here you can also clip where is it this little part is what you can notice how many little ridges there are in here and there's so many options for sort of zip tying and putting different components in here if you wanted to this would be a fantastic rig to hook up to something like maybe like a pro site or a long range you know one of those long range sorts of things the connex systems if you wanted to put that in here you might be able to get some long range digital sort of stuff as well. Now moving on, let's talk about the quality of this thing because look, the TPU mounts, absolutely stellar. The quality of the carbon, you know, it is very, very stiff. It feels nice. It's been chamfered just a little bit on the outside. You're sort of getting one of the premium frames, but you'd expect that up there when it's around the 100 buck mark and even more if you want to get the sort of these long range arms, they do cost a little bit extra as well. So look, I think the quality, I'm going to give it about a 9 out of 10. Really happy with the Prince of Carbon and on top of that, it looks pretty sweet if you want to get one of these sort of decals you can stick to it that does look very very pretty indeed and then i guess we should talk about the pros and the cons and for me well it's kind of it can be a pro and a con i guess you can't have everything you're not going to have super top speed that's one of the cons you know it's not going to be it's not going to hold up extremely well in crashes it's not going to be as robust as like i keep saying like a chameleon or something and you're not going to have really really crazy top speed at least not on this model with these sort of props you know and these bigger ones you might be able to get some faster speed you know with a six inch and maybe a 
higher KV, that sort of stuff. But I really think you're missing out. That's not where this is at. And the pros for this, this is like a long range dream. So it's one of the lightest long range eight inch setups that I've ever seen, you know, uh, even online. There's not too many eight inch frames that happen to be this light. I love the look of it, you know, and I think what it's gonna do well, everything soft mounted in here and the way it holds its GoPro in a low center of gravity, it's gonna be an absolutely beautiful quad. You know, I can really imagine some people diving like whole mountains and things like that. I think you're gonna get some really, really delicious footage. And another pro too, look, if you do wanna put in those bigger antennas or, you know, a Pro Connect, a pro site, whatever sort of, it caters to a lot of different systems you can put in here. And uh, I think that's really playing on the strength of this frame as well. Build it super light, but still have enough room, you know, when we want to put in those bigger components, things like carrying a GoPro. I think it's all a very, very nice match. And I'm honestly really excited to see that flight time that we're going to get. That's probably one of the biggest pros as well. Flight times four days. I reckon on a 5S 2000 milliamp hour battery, it's going to be crazy just how long we might be able to fly around for. But I should mention too, look, this is all new territory to me this frame I've never I guess you know I've, ex I've experienced a lot of frames on this bench but I've never seen a long range rig I've never had anything to do with eight inch props and I'm really I guess just as excited and also curious to find out how is this thing going to actually go because look if it goes well and if we can get some good flight time then it's just a matter of switching out a better receiver and uh, putting in something like a crossfire and I can see some people having a lot of fun and doing some really cool stuff ex like exploring with one of these bad boys alrighty there it is uh, there's my I guess bench breakdown, the part one of the text and the specs. Looking at the Skull V2. I don't know if they offer bind and flies. I'll link it down below if they do. Maybe you could send them an email if you're absolutely desperate for them. But the frame itself, I like what it's doing. I don't think it's, you know, it's not made for proximity flying, anything like that. I think if you're going to crash this thing hard enough, if you are going to be putting a lot of pressure on the arms, a lot of torque, and you're probably going to snap something. It's not going to hold up nearly as well as something like a chameleon or, you know, some of those other tougher quads. But what this thing is going to do right, it is, I think it's going to offer some silky smooth video and flight times for days. I'm really, really curious, I guess we could say, how long do you think this thing is going to hover for? That's what you should do. If I just put this thing in a hover, how long do you think it's going to hover for? Subscribe for more FPV related content. Drop your comments down below. What do you think about this one? Massive shout out to my patrons and let's do it. Let's go check out the part two video. It should be linked down, down below in the description or there should be a little card that should have popped up. Let's jump over to that part two video now and find out, is this going to be the long range FPV rig of our dreams? I can't wait. So subscribe for more FPV related content, go check that video out. And as always, happy flying. I keep even knocking the props, they're huge. Alrighty, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. Definitely subscribe if you're new to the channel and check out these videos. And I'm also going to leave a little link here to my Patreon page because I've got some fantastic Patreon supporters and I like to give back to them as well. So if you want to join the UAV Futures family, there's things like bonus Velcro straps, little bundles of FPV goodies and things like that that also get sent out. Anyway, happy flying.